All right, so you guys, today, um, we're gonna be talking about workflow diagrams. And so first we'll talk about what they are, um, how we use them, and then we'll do some um, in-class exercises to make sure that you get the hang of what they are. And what I want you to do is also, um, the exercises that you're gonna do in class, I'm gonna ask a few people to share what you've done. And there's a method to my madness for that one as well. Um, because I want you guys to feel comfortable about the workflow diagrams that you're doing and not feel um, like um, they're not good enough. So what we're going to cover today is use case diagram. Generally, use case diagrams are used for brainstorming or identifying um, functionality and how the users um, of a system interact with that functionality. Our workflow diagrams are process oriented, so they're used to help us understand the process um, in a particular way. So it could be, if you think about our non-twist project, could be um, understanding, um, you know, like the registration flow or how somebody is adding things to a, um, to the cart or any any process um, that you're trying to implement. Swim lane diagrams are also process oriented. Swim lane diagrams allow you to showcase role-based process, like who's doing what in that workflow. And then sequence diagrams are also process-based diagrams and sequence diagrams focus on the sequence of events that need to happen, okay? So what are workflow diagrams? Um, I said to you guys last week, Google is still my best friend. So um, this is taken from Google. I've given you the link of the article. It's a pretty good article. So um, again, I'll share these slides with you guys um, and you can go through um, this link and read this article. Workflow diagram, also known as workflow, provides a graphical overview of a business process. Using standardized symbols and shapes, the workflow shows step-by-step -step how your work is completed from start to finish. So as part of your assignments, I have you do workflow diagrams on some specific things, right? Like registration, sign up, you know, add to cart, cancellation. But then I also have you do an end-to-end -end workflow diagram to showcase how does a user go from signing up to now subscribing or logging in weekly as a subscriber and, you know, adding things to the cart or you know, adding or changing their, their meals. So um, a workflow diagram, I want you to think about it is a picture view of how your system works, right? You could have specific functionality based on the process, and then you can also have end-to-end. -end. Generally, as you're gathering requirements, you will document pieces of the workflow. And then as you, um, finish building the entire system, you will have an end-to-end -end, and it's super helpful for you to use when validating your requirements because I could just say, hey, I want X, Y, and Z in my system, but unless you um, put it as a workflow diagram, you may not realize what's missing. And this is what workflow diagrams have you do is they help you understand where the missing pieces are. And oftentimes your stakeholders don't really know what they want. 90% of the time they don't know. And so the DOT project that that um you know the contract that we that I won that Naima is helping me with from a BA standpoint, we had our first meeting this week. And so we had our first requirements gathering session and we said to them, okay, what do you want? And they kind of kept going around in circles. Let me see if I can pull that up actually. Uh, no, I I don't have it, but then I also shouldn't because it's, it's privilege information or confidential information. So we, we said to them, you know, we had the meeting, Naima was there, I was there and they said, okay, you know, tell us what you want. And so they kept talking to us about the things they do versus what they want. And so oftentimes 
again, this is really normal. Your stakeholders generally have an idea of what they want and not necessarily, you know, how it should work or what they want. So generally what I started to do while we were in that meeting was start to create a high level workflow diagram. And so we will continue to build on that with them as we have more requirements gathering sessions like, okay, so you want an intake form. Okay, so what should happen to the intake form? And generally that's how you gather requirements. So next week's agenda, I want it, I want to talk about gathering requirements and showcasing to you how you can use workflow diagrams to help you gather those requirements. <laughs>